Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to show you from start to finish a entire process of me creating a piece of art in our house. So I have my A4 Midori. This is kind of, I did sketch Timber 2021 in here, and I have a whole playlist of um, all my sketchbook tours if you want to see what this is, but I've done other things in here. Um, sort of my game of shrooms, geocaching, planners, and working on logos and things. So <clears throat> this is how I get started with things. And I pretty much only sketch out things for large permanent projects or things I'm giving away or commissions. I don't really pre-sketch anything for my actual sketchbooks. I just sort of with all the practice trying to maintain and grow my confidence with just putting pen to paper. So what I'm going to be painting is our back door. Now our house is kind of set up, you walk in and it's the kitchen, but the kitchen is open. We totally had everything redone in this house. Um, our house was built in the early 1940s, so it's older. And the kitchen living space is all one room and the door to go outside is just a door. It's not a sliding glass door. So with all that in mind, I want to paint it. So our walls are kind of, well, this paper is kind of a very ivory, but think this color, but with uh, green undertones. It's called Lime White by Ferro and Ball. And I just color matched the swatch. I didn't actually get the Ferro Ball paint because it's so pricey, but our back door is wood brown, and I know some people are like, no, don't paint that, keep it. Um, I'm, I'm not keeping it. <laughs> I'm painting it uh, white, and I'm going to do a design on top of it. So I need to make a like a to-do list, and I'm going to date this March 2023. I like dating my things, so when I go back, I can look and see what I have. Um, let me zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, I don't want anyone to have to strain their eyes to see what I'm doing. So I need to do a to-do list. Um, I don't know about the coding or what sort of the situation is on the door. So I'm going to have to sand the door and I'm probably gonna use a 120 grit sandpaper. Um, we don't have a garage. We converted it into a rental so the amount of electronic sort of tools we own are one. We have an electric drill and that's it. So this is going to be done by hand. I know it takes longer, but we just don't have the storage for stuff. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is tape windows, tape off the windows. Um, because I paint a little slapdash and I tend to spill and drip once in a while with my enthusiasm, <clears throat> there are windows on our back door. The third thing I will be doing is um, painting white. And I'm not sure if that's going to be one coat or two. So that's going to be in my notes. And I may circle which one it was just for future reference in case I go to, I don't know, paint anything else. And then the fourth thing is uh, paint, paint the design. Now I spoke with my husband because he lives here too. He also owns this house. And I told him I wanted to do a botanical motif on the door. I thought it would be really beautiful. And um, initially I was kind of thinking like tree of life, which is that circle tree where the top half is the tree and the bottom half is the roots. Um, and then I was thinking maybe a rose bush sort of, but I want to do it monochromatically. I want to do everything in green. We have beams in our kitchen that are a, mm, I would say, think middle green and then go to shades darker. <laughs> so really deep grass green. And I want to do that green to match the beams in our kitchen since it's all one open space. And so it, it's going to be monochromatic unless I incorporate some of my son's bedroom color green, which is a paler green, I'm not sure. Um, for highlights or something. We're gonna see how it looks. So um, there may be some <laughs> uh, highlights or shadows if I incorporate some of our bedroom paint. 
and I'm not sure about this one. So we will see what the finish looks like and then if I need to add something if I want to change up the way it looks. So what we ended up going with is ferns. We had, my husband was like, do native plants. And I was like, that's a great idea. So gonna do native ferns. Now our door has nine windows. <laughs> so, and they're all very uniform. I will cut in a picture of what our door looks like. And then there's sort of a design in the wood there's a lot going on with our back door. So I'm gonna be painting over design. There's sort of this triangle in a square design. And these are the windows. And I'm going to be drawing over it. Now, I need to decide sort of what that final design's gonna look like a little bit. And then my husband can look at that and say, oh, okay, so I'll probably just do green for the door. Now there's different types of ferns. So when you think of like fern shapes, you have the one that's sort of like individual leaves that get bigger and bigger and bigger. You get the idea. There's this style. Um, there's the kind that sort of, hmm, they have more fan shaped, sort of fan shaped leaves. They're a little bit more delicate. I haven't decided if I'm going to do something uniform where both sort of come up and meet, or if I'm going to do something a little bit more wild and I'm gonna have different varieties of ferns hand painted. So there's sort of the delicate looking type. Um, there's some that have really jagged sort of shape. There's so many different types of ferns. I mean, there's at least over 50 <clears throat> that I believe, you know, if you Googled and look at it, looked it all up. So you see what I'm talking about with the jagged leaves. And then there's the kind Make sure I get all this on film. Where each branch has leaves that have leaves. So you get to those and it's, it's more painting work, but visually it's very beautiful. So each leaf has leaves, sort of each branch. My husband knows all the names of all the things. He um, took a lot of botany in college. So he'd be able to tell you he can identify all the things <clears throat> but so you see what I'm talking about with this style and this is um yeah slow going slow going with drawing which would make it very slow going with painting I don't mind that that's fine um and then there's also like the other aspect of ferns like when they're unfurling and sort of curling out where all the leaves are together and it hasn't unfurled itself yet. That could be a very beautiful element to add. So I have a ton of options. And this is just how, how I set up these projects. So I'm gonna create little check boxes for when I get these things done. And then I can check them as I go. But I could totally, all right, we have the door all right, since it's going to be green. And these, I'm drawing around the window shape in case you're like, that looks weird. There's a lot of window. So I could go super big and like have one curling and unfurling right here. You 
can sort of have another design behind it. And again, these are just sort of placeholders. I may do a variety of type of ferns. And then I'll tell you, I'll tell you and time it how long it takes to do each portion. In case you're curious about undertaking a project like this in your house, making your house, you know, artful and beautiful. We just have tons of leftover paint from all our bedrooms and stuff. So I don't have to buy anything. This is all supplies we already have on hand, which is wonderful for, you know, feeling an itch and wanting to sort of do something. Now, the other option I could do, let me redraw the door real quick. Is, here, let me get the windows in. The windows eat up a huge chunk of the door, but I don't mind that, so. And then there's that weird little triangle design in the door. And we could totally change out the door and I guess put in a brand new door that's all flat, but I, I like the one that's there. It has, there's a charm to it. I could go small. I could go small with the ferns and have them not come up. Just totally an option. Um, and it can look kind of like different branches. Again, the paints we have, we have a bluish green from our bedroom. We have um, some really pale purples and we have pinks. So it could look something kind of like this or I have so many um, like options, you know? The imagination becomes the limit here. I'm trying to figure out what to do. In case you're wondering, my husband doesn't care what I do to the house. He just likes to have like, you know, ideas along with me. He's very supportive of all the things. So I could do like a actual fern plant here. I'm trying to go a little quicker so you can visually see what I'm talking about here. Again, this would be across that sort of diamond pattern with the indentations, so it might be a little challenging to make it look realistic, but it could be very beautiful. Oh, my neighbors are doing yard work. Have another little plant popping up here. And this one looks kind of uniform too. So, I like the big, I like the bold. I think if I'm going to do it, I might as well go large. I just need to decide, and I'm probably going to sketch out in pencil over the white paint. So I can see how everything looks and make sure that the weight is kind of evenly distributed with the painting. I don't want one side to have all the art and the other side to be kind of empty. So, again, that's just my loose thought process on this. So, I mean, I could have it come up the middle, and this is just like a Pilot um, G207 pen in green, in case you're wondering. Um, I'll also link a video I did. I tested the Midori paper with a ton of different inks, and if you're curious what this paper can handle, I will link that video because I was curious to see. So I figure if I'm curious, other people might be curious. I just, this paper is very, very smooth and soft. So it's an absolute pleasure to draw on with pen, ink, pencil. Okay. I could do a big one and then have you know, 
something sort of out the top here, just the side. And again, there's gonna be a doorknob. Okay. Won't that be fun? <laughs> I know it's not for everybody, but I love color and green is beautiful in the living room kitchen area. So this is my process. This is what I have. I'm going to get started on sanding the door. You ready? Okay.
Okay, well, that's done. Um, <laughs> so this is the brush I used. This is the only painting brush I have on hand. Um, I ended up using it two of my watercolor brushes, but I cleaned them really well, so I think they'll be fine. I mean, I don't really use brushes this large in my work for the most part, so that's fine. And this is just a makeup brush I received from a friend who was like, I can't use these, I have too many. Um, oh gosh, we're coming on in six years now. And she's like, why don't you try them with your art? So I used a makeup brush as well. Um, doing a low buy art supply, there are so many gray areas where I could have easily said, no, I wanna buy a tiny roller, I wanna buy a wider brush, I'd rather spend the money than spend the time. Um, I don't have all weekend to dedicate to this. Um, and I didn't do that. Um, I'm sort of very strict with my rules and anything that feels like I'm purchasing something that I could possibly use later as an art supply for art, I'm not gonna purchase for the house. Again, we have limited space. Uh, we converted our garage into a rental. So storage is very, very limited, but these are the kinds of things that pop up that I really don't, I mean, there's no set rules for a low buy. And there's so many different like caveats and things you don't think about when you set that. Like my limit's $500 for the year. And my second purchase is going to be in the summer. So probably three to four months. And I just, I don't know. I don't want to purchase anything. So these are just all the supplies we had. So because of that, painting took much longer than it needed to. Again, I did three coats of the white on top of the wood after I sanded it. Um, I tried to write down the times. I don't have an electric sander either. So sanding took like 45 minutes. Um, no, sanding took about 20 minutes. Taping it off took 45 minutes. Um, painting took 40 minutes per coat and I did three coats. And then the dark green took me a couple hours and then the light green on top took me another couple hours. So all in all, this was a very two day project. Um, it's fine. I'm not completely in love with it. I think I need to live with it till September. September, we have a lot of heat. I used our, we have some floor heaters just cause I get so chilled. Some like space heaters and stuff to help speed along the drying process. But if I decide later <laughs> that I want to repaint it and do something um, maybe more personalized to the family, that might be fun too. So if I do that, I'll just clip it in. It won't be a dedicated video because that's kind of a lot to do. Two videos dedicated to one door in the house. My husband really likes it. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just need to live with it longer. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of in a cluttered area. It's like sandwiched between our homeschool shelving unit and the shelving unit we use for all our board games. And our living room space is very, um, filled. There's no wasted space in our house. And then everything is bolted to the walls because of earthquakes. So we can't really move a lot of stuff. Like we have limited wall space for bolting things for safety. So it is kind of a cluttered area, but um, I don't know. I just thought it'd be super fun to try it with all, we have so many gallons of like house paint that are going on four years old now that I thought it'd be fun to try. Um, I may do some fun things in my kids' rooms. I don't know that I'll film that just because for privacy reasons. Um, but if I'm showing you like a corner of a wall or something, it might be okay to clip in. I don't know. I don't know. This was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And like I said, doing a low buy, these are the things that pop up and I have to like sit with myself and be like, okay, well, am I going to spend money? Does that count? And, and if you are doing a low buy or a no buy, um, maybe, things for the house don't even, like it's such a clear boundary and separate deal for you that you may think that this is silly that I didn't go ahead and do that and save the time. But I just sat around and chatted with my family while they were doing things. And so it really wasn't, it wasn't like a big deal. Instead of chatting around the table, I was just chatting on a little stool in front of a door. Um, so it's not like time was taken away from the family or anything. I just, there's so many little things 
that I could so easily dish out money for and I think sometimes it's really cool for my kids to see me problem solve and get creative and do unique things with everything I have and show them that I don't have to rush out to the store for every single project. I can just kind of make do with what I have if I treat my supplies really, really well and care for everything. So I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I'm gonna clip in a little video of our dog. She scratched her chin, so she has to wear a little, <laughs> it's like a little pillow around her neck and it's the cutest dang thing I've ever seen. And I just thought I would share it with you cause the cuteness, I can't. So I'm gonna clip in a little thing of our dog um, getting a little treat, but I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week if you decide to paint some portion of your house or do something unique and interesting in your house Drop me a line. I love hearing about creative interior design ideas I just think like people that wallpaper their ceiling and do really creative things like that are just like my favorite people So I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you later. Bye